There are three things you need to know about the trick that we're learning today. One, it's super easy. Two, it can be done with any normal deck of cards. And three, it's so deceptive that it'll fool you even if you're the one doing it. Let's go. Welcome back everyone, I hope you're doing well. This week we're learning another one of my ridiculous masterpieces. Uh, this trick is extremely simple to do, most of you will be able to learn it by tonight. It's done with normal cards, so all you need is a deck of cards, but the best thing about this trick is that it's extremely deceptive. In fact, I'm not 100% sure why it works. It's just one of those things that while you're doing it, in your head you go like, no way, and then it happens and you don't even know what just happened. The other great thing about this trick that I really love is that it's extremely versatile. You could do it as a performance without any spectators, you know, the way you're gonna see the performance right now. You can do it for spectators, they each pick a card and you do something with their three selections. You could do it virtually, you could do it live. There's so many different ways to do this. Now for the performance here, I'm gonna do the basic version, which is three cards, no spectators, done virtually for the camera. Here we go. I'm gonna show you the difference between a beginner, an amateur, and a professional magician using the ace, the two, and the three of spades. I'm gonna put a bunch of cards on each one of these. So there's a bunch for the ace, there's a bunch for the two, and there's a bunch for the three. Now watch carefully. The first card goes right there in the center of the packet, slowly and fairly. That's the first one. That's the second one. Watch that one, same thing, slowly goes right into the packet. And finally, the third one, I can't imagine it getting much more fair than that. Now I'm gonna start with beginner magicians. Beginner magicians definitely know a couple of very cool tricks, but they often mess up as well. For example, I'm gonna to try to snap my fingers and make the first card, the ace of spades, impossibly turn upside down. Check it out. Just a snap and one card in the whole deck turns upside down. Yeah, that's a seven. Um, as I said, beginners every now and then will mess up, but the key to being a good magician is to know how to recover from that. So here's what I'll do. I'll count down seven cards into the deck and hopefully that'll be the first card. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the seventh card is the first one, the ace. Now, amateur magicians have practiced a lot more. They tend to not mess up. For example, this time if I just snap, no mistakes, that second card, the two of spades, magically turns upside down. But professionals, now they could do things with a deck of cards that nobody can explain. For example, I am going to, just by giving the cards a cut, tell you that the third card, the three of spades, is exactly 11 cards down. In fact, check this out. If I just give those cards a cut, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and the 11th card that I cut to exactly is the three of spades. So there it was, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Now once again, that was the version of just me performing for the camera. So if you guys wanna do something on your social media and you don't have any spectators, you can perform that for the camera. But most of the time when I do this, I have people, whether it's virtual or a live show, I have three people choose a card. You know, you can do it physically or virtually. Then I do the whole sequence with the three selections. And I think that's probably more powerful, but I wanted to show how versatile it is. So let's talk about the trick a little bit. In the 60s, there was a book published by a gentleman called Cliff Green called Professional uh, Card Magic. And in that book, there was a routine called Henry Christ's Fabulous Ace Routine. And it was spectacular. The four aces were found in an amazing way. But I wanted to simplify it, I wanted to remove some phases, and I wanted to make the final phase like a real big punch to the head. So I modified it, and this is the version I've been doing for years. So without any further ado, let's jump right into the tutorial, the explanation, get a deck of cards, let's learn this step by step. But before you do, hit that subscribe button, turn those notifications on for more tutorials, mentalism, and hypnosis. To do this amazing trick, you're gonna need a standard deck of cards. Any deck will do. I'm using the industry standard, which is bicycle rider backs. If you wanna get these, I'll leave a link in the description, but any deck of cards works. 
At the bottom of the deck, you're gonna need an upside down seven. Seven of diamonds, hearts, club, spades, doesn't matter. Upside down at the bottom. Now, if you're starting with this trick, you can just already have it upside down and go right into it. But at the end of this video, I will show you how to do that subtly, how to right in front of their faces, turn a seven upside down at the bottom so you can go into this at any point in the middle of your set. Finally, if you're doing the version that I did in the performance, which is with the ace two three, then you need the ace, the two, and the three at the top. But more often than not, I have people choose three cards, they put them on the table, and I do it with their selections. I think that's a little bit better. But for explanations, we'll use the ace, the two, and the three on top. So we have the ace, the two, the three, the rest of the deck, and then an upside down seven at the bottom. Now for what I say, you can go back to the performance and check it out. But here is what you're doing. It's actually super simple. You turn over the ace, the two, and the three, or again, this could be their three selections. Now on the first ace, or on the first card, you're gonna put down nine cards. So you casually spread like this, and I like to count in my head three, 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 and just casually drop them there. It looks like you just took a bunch of cards and threw them there. Don't make it look like you're counting. Now you're gonna do a swing cut. So you're gonna grab the deck from above like this with my thumb in the back, middle finger in the front. My index kicks up a bunch of cards and sends them over to the left like this. And my left hand comes to grab these cards. And this bottom packet goes on top of the two, which means the upside down seven is landing on top of the two. And finally, these cards, doesn't matter how many there are, go on top of the three. That's totally random. Now. You're gonna grab these nine cards, you're gonna spread them, and the ace is gonna go fourth from the bottom. So one, two, three, four, that's where I put it. So I could see this as I hold it up, and I'm putting it fourth. It's supposed to look like you're randomly throwing it in the middle, but it's going fourth. So one, two, three, four. Now you close it up, and if you have spectators there, you let them push it in, because that's as fair as it gets. I'm not even sure why this works. Now you're gonna grab the second selection. So if it's the two, you're gonna take it out. If it's their selection, it's gonna be face down. You take it out, and as you're showing it to them, your left hand with this packet over here is going to give a squeeze, a good, just one squeeze like this, and it's gonna bow those cards like that. It's subtle. It doesn't have to be a huge, like you, just a little squeeze like that, a good squeeze. You take that second card, now that they've seen it, you place it on top of this, you put all these other cards on top, and again, they push it in. How fair is this? It's ridiculous. And then the three is gonna turn over like this on its own pack. All these cards are gonna go on top, and they're going to push it in. Now most of the work is done. I don't really know what mathematical principle applies here, but everything is in place for some reason. Now you're gonna snap your fingers, you're gonna spread, and the seven is going to be face up. You're gonna take all the cards above the seven, turn them face up, set them down here. Pick up these cards, and as you talk about the seven and you say, let's use the seven, my left hand subtly pushes this top card over, gets my pinky under it, that's the two by the way, it's the second selection. My pinky goes under it, and my thumb pulls back, and we keep what I call a pinky break under there. So my pinky is under one card and that happens just like that. As I show the seven and I say, we're going to use the seven. Now I come back, I add the seven to that card. Remember there's that break now under two cards. I come over and I pick both up like this. This is the easiest double lift in the world. I just pick both up. So that to them looks like one card, but I picked up at that opening and now I've got that other card secretly under there and I place it here square. Be careful here so they don't split. And I say I'm going to count down seven cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, and that seventh card is the first one. Now again, I really like it when they chose cards because here you go, and the seventh card, what was your card, the first one? Boom. And you show the first card. Now you've already flipped over the second card because that double. So you set it down, you ask the second person, if you're doing this with the selections, what was your card? They say two of spades in this case. You spread and that is face up. 
Now for the third card. This is crazy. Naturally where you split, you grab all the cards here, you put them on top here, and you close it up. Now you can do it right away, but I like to throw in a couple of fake cuts to really make it seem like the deck is totally messed up and you can't have a clue where that last card is. If you wanna learn the best fake cuts in the world, check the link in the description where you could learn a bunch of fake cuts to do at this point. But the bottom line is this, whether you do the fake cuts or not, because of everything you just did, somehow the third card is always the 11th card down. And because you gave the cards that bend earlier, you can easily cut there because that bend is really easy to grab. See, I just did it. That's it. It's as simple as that. They're naturally bent so that I can just go and grab 10 cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's because of that bend I gave earlier. And the 11th card, guys, this for your spectators is a killer. It looks like you have such mastery of a deck of cards. You go, what was the third card? In this case, three of spades. Boom. There is the last card. Now, sometimes when you do this, every now and then because you didn't give a good bend or something like that, you may not cut exactly 10. So you might do this and you cut more. Don't panic. You said it's the 11th card. So you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's the 11th card. I said your card was 11th and bam. But honestly, if you give that a good bend, it's almost impossible to not cut there. I don't think I've ever failed that. With a bit of practice, you're gonna nail it. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there's a way to do this where you turn the seven over subtly right in front of their face. So they can mix the cards, give them to you, and you're ready to go. And for that, check the link in the description. I've made a completely separate video to teach you how to turn over that seven subtly. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this trick, and also let me know how are you gonna use this. Are you gonna do it like I did, just for the camera, or are you gonna do it for people with their selections? How are you gonna use this? How do you see yourself working this into your repertoire? Hope you guys enjoy it, put in the practice, and you'll have a great trick right in your pocket, and I will see you on the next video.